Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. Learn how to get your music on all the regular streaming and download platforms and how you can get 7% off your first year of membership later on in this video. Sitting down and facing off against a blank DAW can be intimidating and frustrating if it leads to an unproductive session. So today I want to talk about concrete methods and strategies you can use to come up with song ideas, some that will be a little bit more familiar, and then some that will be a bit off the beaten path and unusual. And along the way, I'll be providing examples of how I've used it in my own music. So let's start off fairly simple, but maybe non-obvious for newer producers. Start with a chord progression. It's easy to assume that if you hear a really catchy melody that it just kind of came to someone, but that is very often not the case. Often, it was written over a chord progression that had already been established. And that can often be a really, really good jumping off point, especially if that's something you're not used to using. So spend some time coming up with chord progressions, whether you're playing them, clicking in notes, using a list of chords, or even pulling a chord progression from the internet, which is something I built into my song ideas generator that I made a whole video about. Essentially, it pulls up a random chord progression from a list of common chord progressions, a random instrument, and a random tempo, and I've used that to write music a few times as well. It's also worth noting that chord progressions aren't really copyrightable, especially if you just kind of use the chords in order and don't do anything that makes them identifiably stolen from somewhere. So take chords from somewhere if you need them as inspiration, just be sure to hide your influences and don't rip anyone off. In the same token, another thing I would recommend for coming up with new melodic and chord ideas is to use a new key or mode that you haven't experimented with yet. There's a great Charles Cornell video that explains modes if you're unfamiliar with how or why they work. But in general, picking a new scale to start with can be a really helpful way to force your brain to kind of think differently and go a little more instinctually. So that's also something I would recommend giving a go and maybe use a plugin like Scalar to help facilitate that. The next method for coming up with song ideas is to change up your approach to sound design. And I'll explain what I mean by this the short way and then the long way. The short version is if you're used to using presets, try designing some sounds from scratch. If you're used to designing sounds from scratch, try using presets. I've found often that I get song ideas just by scrolling through synthesizer presets or instrument patches in general, kind of noodling around on a MIDI keyboard or a groove box. And yeah, having that sound just there can often spark something and force me to go with my gut when coming up with a song idea. So if you go out of your way to design a lot of sounds from scratch, I would recommend spending some time just scrolling through presets. I would try not to get elitist about it and recognize them for being a very legitimate source of inspiration that a ton of top level producers use. On the flip side of that, if you rely mostly on presets, I would advise spending some time tinkering around with synthesizers because by doing this, you can often land on sounds, once again, that spark song ideas. This is especially the case for me in bass music like dubstep and drum and bass, but it translates across genres. So here's an example of something I came up with after just scrolling through presets. And here are a couple examples of songs where I designed a sound from scratch and that sparked the entire song idea. Next up, flip a sample. And this is of course most common in hip hop and house, but this translates to every genre of electronic music. And for that matter, a lot of music outside of electronic music in hip hop have incorporated sampling in some form. So I would highly recommend playing around with this. It's absolutely a creative art form if done with care. And you can start with stuff that's royalty free, like stuff from loop packs from Splice or Loop Masters or places like that. I would recommend going out of your way to chop them up as if you're flipping a record, 
But if you do that, you have a guarantee that that sample is cleared just by virtue of the fact that you bought it from a site like Splice. Or you can go to sites that charge for full songs that you're able to sample and they have deals worked out with artists. Or you could even just chop up a sample and then remove it after the fact so it's only inspiration. There's a lot of different directions this can take you. If you haven't messed around with chopping up and flipping samples, I would highly recommend giving it a go. Continuing that thought process of taking something existing and recontextualizing it, try remixing or even covering a song. Obviously, remixing is a huge part of electronic music culture, and so if you are lacking for ideas, finding an acapella and building a new instrumental around it, especially if it changes up the genre, can be super inspiring and can often help bring out your own sound because you're taking something and going, how would I do the me version of this? And hip hop producers will do this. They'll get a rap acapella and then write an instrumental under it, and that kind of guarantees that it'll be structured well for a rapper and kind of stay out of the way of the vocal, and then they'll just remove the acapella and you've got your own original beat. Or you could do something that I've done quite a bit is where if you do a remix and you end up really liking it and you want to release it on an album or an EP like professionally, but you can't clear that remix, make it a cover. Get rid of all the original elements of the song, get a different vocalist to sing on it, maybe a friend of yours or someone on Fiverr, and then it's a cover song now and that you can clear. And I would recommend doing that using today's sponsor, DistroKid. They make that process super straightforward to work out all the licensing involved with selling a cover song through them. They distribute to all the regular streaming and download platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, Pandora, and a whole host of others. You go to them, they will get that license for you and you pay a really reasonable amount for that license. They do the rest and you are able to sell that cover song. And if you're trying to kind of get your name out there, remixing a song as a cover song can be a good way to do that. Hopefully get added to playlists of like genre transformations of popular songs and stuff like that. So this is something I've been doing for songs that I like and want to put my own spin on for years. And DistroKid makes that all the more doable. So if you'd like to get 7% off their already affordable prices for your first year, hit up the link in the description that helps out this channel and gets you a fantastic service. And DistroKid has been fantastic to work with. So thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. And here's an example of a cover song I did with the same attitude as if it were a remix. We said goodbye, that's what you told me once. So many times we've made our peace. But this is love, I'll never give you up. I know you'll always come home to me. Up next, a super underrated way to come up with song ideas is to use a melody generator. And this might be a little bit controversial. Some people will see it as cheating or will say that there's no possible way that like a piece of software can get a decent sounding melody that sounds remotely human. And I would say both of those are missing the point. Using a melody generator plugin or piece of software is not necessarily meant to get you the end product, it's meant to give you some inspiration to work with. When you use a melody generator, it'll probably spit out some MIDI, and then from there, it's up to you to take that and conform it to your own taste in music. Tweak all the notes, maybe make it entirely unrecognizable from what the melody generator initially gave you, and eventually you will kind of have worked your way to something new that sounds like you, but was kickstarted by a machine. And I think there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I think it can be a great way to immediately get yourself moving on a production session. A couple plugins that I use for this are Riffer by Audio Modern and Melody Sauce by Eva Beat. Both companies are friends of the channel. So here's an example of a melody I made out of what Melody Sauce gave me. And here's an example of working with Riffer. Those are just the two companies and plugins I've worked with the most. There are lots of others out there and they're not sponsoring this video, but I do genuinely recommend those and giving melody generators a go in general. My next tip is a personal favorite of mine and one that I also think is super underrated, and that is change your location. Get out of your main space, like your bedroom studio or whatever. In this case, this is my bedroom studio. 
get out of that space and get somewhere else and use maybe a portable music production device like a Novation Circuit or a Roland MC-101, an iPad, iPhone, or Android app. There are lots of fantastic ones out there that are actually pretty powerful or possibly your laptop. Right now at the time that I'm filming this in 2020, it's not possible to like set up inside a cafe as I would have advised last year before we were in the middle of a global pandemic. Don't do that. If you're gonna go out and about, make sure you're doing it as safely as humanly possible and you're away from people and all that kind of stuff. Maybe go to a park, sit in your backyard or something like that. Just something to change your location. I often find that that helps me feel much more inspired, whether it's from being in the middle of a bustling city or being out in nature. Both transport my brain to a different place and make me feel much more creative and I'm much more likely to be focused as well. There were actually some studies done and I'll link one in the description that talks about how a change of location actually can improve focus for difficult tasks. So there's a lot to this. I would highly recommend giving this a go. And for that matter, to extend this out further, try composing off of visual or kind of vibe cues. If you want to make something with a sci-fi theme to it, spend some time watching a sci-fi movie or looking at cool sci-fi renders of architecture and futuristic cities and all that kind of stuff. Priming your brain with cues other than simply audio is a really underrated way to make yourself feel more creative and come up with ideas that you wouldn't have otherwise. And finally, adopt some kind of constraint. And there are a few forms that I want to shout out specifically. The first one is talked about in an article on edmprod.com, so I'm not going to go super in depth on it here. I'll link it in the description. But this is called the song palette strategy, and it essentially says, if you want to make like a certain style of music, go on to Beatport or Spotify or something and find like five songs that kind of exemplify the style you want to make and then write down defined characteristics of a bunch of the songs and then cherry pick which ones you want to force yourself to incorporate into that song. It allows you to pull inspiration from them, but you're not ripping off any one thing. You're just taking little bits and pieces, little ideas, and working off of those. And so you can kind of create something in the vein that you're going for without actually copying anyone. So this is something that I've used a bunch and have found very helpful, especially if I'm trying to pick up a new style of music or just jump on a new trend or something like that. And there's also the good old song challenge. Do something that is unnecessarily difficult, like make a song only out of household items. Is this going to get dropped in a club or top the Beatport or Spotify charts? Probably not. But it was a lot of fun, it got me thinking creatively, and it made me a better sound designer, forcing me to identify surprising sources of sounds and then process them to sound a certain way made me a better producer, and I've done this multiple times for that reason. You could also set the constraint that you're only allowed to use like a certain amount of instrument tracks, or you're only allowed to use a certain scale, or you must have something interesting like a tempo change or a genre change happen in the middle of the song, or you combine two genres. There are a ton of different challenges you can take on, and I would recommend experimenting with this because these can often push you out of your comfort zone, push you to develop new skills, and push you to come up with new ideas. And those are all of the tips that I wanted to discuss. These are the things that I personally have found by far the most helpful for continuously coming up with new ideas and having a high musical output. If you have any others that I failed to mention that you would like to contribute, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Let's have this video and its comments be kind of a resource for people looking to come up with new musical ideas. And of course, be sure to hit up the link in the description to get 7% off your first year of DistroKid. Once again, thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit. Peace.